Matthew chapter number 15, very, very familiar uh, portion of Scripture, very familiar account of where Jesus uh, uh, changed a woman's daughter's life. Uh, and uh, we'll begin reading in verse number 21. The Bible says, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. And he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, Great is thy faith, be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do bless your holy name. We're thankful, Lord, that you did think of us. Back before the foundation of the world, you was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And God, we're thankful you thought of us when you was on Calvary, bleeding and dying for our sins. Uh, Lord, when we were out in sin, you thought of us and you made a way for us to hear the gospel. Lord, when we called upon you, you answered and you saved us and changed our lives. Uh, and God, we bless your holy name. Lord, there's never been a day, there never is a day, there never will be a day that we've not been on your mind. And Lord, I'm glad... Uh, many days in your heart and so father i pray that this uh, very hour you'd help somebody you'd encourage somebody you'd edify somebody you'd enlighten somebody to thy truth uh, and i pray that the sweet holy ghost of god would be allowed to do his office work around here tonight i pray you'd bind the powers of hell i pray that lord you'd put a hedge about us uh, god i do pray that lord uh, you would speak to our hearts from the very pages of the Word of God. Uh, I pray that, Lord, uh, 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 there'd be a freshness to this old, old story. And I pray that, God, uh, we'd draw closer to God. I pray for those that are working with our young people over on the other side. Uh, you'd bless those young people. Uh, Lord, you'd hedge them in. Uh, God, you'd give them something that will help them when they're at the schoolhouse or uh, uh, in the neighborhoods. Uh, and God, you'd strengthen them and encourage them. Uh, Father, I do pray if there's anybody, uh, uh, Lord, here tonight that's never been saved by the grace of God, that tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, I pray the Lord Jesus would be high and lifted up. Uh, we'd magnify you and glorify you uh, and bless your holy name. Uh, thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Uh, now, Father, help us uh, use this unworthy vessel uh, and God convey this uh, uh, truth that you gave me just a little bit ago uh, uh, to the hearts of your people. Uh, and may we leave out rejoicing in that we've met with the Lord. Uh, God, have your will and way. We'll bless you for it. Uh, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Uh, Amen, uh, amen. Uh, now this is a, a Thad Abbott introduction. Uh, uh, this is an introduction that has a whole lot more points than the message will. Uh, but there's a whole lot in this text. Uh, and and uh, uh, Paul told Timothy, preach the word. Uh, and if we ignore the text, we have nothing to stand on. Uh, so we want to make certain you understand what is going on in this text. Uh, I want you to notice, first of all, uh, uh, this woman's cry, verse 22. Uh, the Bible says, and Behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. Uh, uh, she'd heard Jesus preach down there. Uh, she'd seen Jesus do a work down there. Uh, uh, Jesus was so compelling down there. Uh, she came out of the same coast that he came from uh, just to get to where he was. Uh, 
Aren't you glad? Uh, 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 somewhere along the line, you heard about Jesus. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, uh, the Lord made himself real in your life. Uh, and you realized you needed to get to Jesus if you was ever going to get any help. Uh, uh, she came out of the same coast, the Bible says. Uh, and, and it says, and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. She recognizes him as Lord. She recognizes that he's the Messiah. He's the son of David. And she asks for something that he has a boundless supply of. She asked and cried for mercy. I would to God that God's people would once again grab the horns of the altar and begin to cry for mercy. Mercy uh, began to cry that God in his wrath would remember mercy uh, and that God once again uh, uh, would shine on his people uh, and do a work in our day like he's done in years gone by. We see her cry, her cries for mercy. I want you to notice her cause. Why did she come to Jesus? The Bible says in verse 22, My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. She had a reason to get to Jesus. Uh, there was a problem down at her house, uh, a problem that no physician could fix, uh, a problem no politician could fix, uh, a problem uh, uh, no neighbor no person could fix. Uh, uh, she had a problem uh, that only God Almighty could fix. Uh, and the cause for her leaving her home, uh, the cause for her to cry out for mercy, uh, she had a great need. Uh, I have learned this. Uh, uh, sometimes Sometimes it takes a tragedy uh, in somebody's life uh, in order for them to seek out the Lord. Uh, sometimes it's a divorce. Uh, sometimes they lose a job. Uh, sometimes they lose a family member. Uh, uh, sometimes they just need to be woke up to the reality. Uh, there are things bigger than them in this old world, uh, and they'll never get any help unless they come unto the Lord. Uh, the psalmist said, I'll cry unto the, or I'll look unto the hills from whence cometh my help, my help cometh from the Lord. Uh, and she had a tremendous cause. Her daughter was grievously vexed with the devil. Uh, can I say, this world is grievously vexed by the devil. And I'm I'm not so uh, uh, uncertain that uh, there's not a lot of these devils running around today. But anyway, that's another message. We see her cry. We see her cause. But notice the cold shoulder. Verse 23. But he answered her not a word. Now, Brother Ron, this is the Lord. I thought Joe Osteen said that he wanted something good to happen to you today. I mean, Colonel, this is the Lord. And this is a woman that has a need bigger than anybody or anything in this world could meet. Only he, Brother Don, could meet it. And certainly, uh, when she cried for mercy, isn't God obligated to give mercy? Amen. Well, that's what we're told. But Brother Bob, the Bible said he ignored her. He answered her not a word. She is pouring out her heart and calling on the Lord. And he acts as if she's not even there. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Have you ever called upon the Lord and the answer didn't come immediately? Doesn't mean he's not listening. Mm -mm. It might mean you're asking for the wrong thing. She came because of her daughter. But as we'll find out in this text, when it gets down to where she realizes who she is and who he is, business will pick up. Can I say we see the cold shoulder? Now, notice his calling. Verse number 24, the Bible says, or in verse 23, uh, uh, he answered not a word, verse 24, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Jesus came unto his own, and his own received him not, the Bible said. But I'm glad it didn't stop there. If it stopped with the fact that he came to the lost sheep of Israel, 
And if it stopped with the fact that he came unto his own and his own received him not, we'd all be in trouble tonight. Can I say this? We'd all be on our way to hell and there'd be no remedy. But over there in John it said, He came into his own, his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. He came into the Gentile, or, or to the Jews, but he made a way for the Gentiles. Mm. Huh? Mm, by the way, the Jews are still his chosen people. I don't care how many over there in the Middle East don't like it. And I don't care how many on our college campuses don't like it. And I don't care how many of our politicians don't like it. And I don't care how many so-called Christians don't like it. God did promise to bless them that blessed Abraham's seed and curse them that cursed his seed. Huh? And the Bible said that we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Mm -mm. Huh? Folks don't like it, but they don't like me either, so that's okay. Hmm? Uh, we see his calling. But notice, if you will, her cherishing. Look at verse 25. Then came she and worshipped him. She begins to cherish the fact that he's the Lord. She's worshipping him, and he just told her, I didn't come for you. But she worshipped him anyway. You know, Brother Tommy, the Bible says that he's worthy to be praised. He is worthy of our worship even if he never hears our prayers. So she done the only thing she knew to do, worshiping. I wonder, did you come out to worship him tonight? Hmm? Notice her convoking in verse 25. Then, she came, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. This is the second time she recognizes him as Lord. Can I say the religious crowd to this point hasn't recognized him to the Lord? And can I say, many of them still haven't recognized him as Lord. Uh, Amen. But she recognizes him as Lord, and she is convoking or appealing to him a second time. Lord, help me. First time she said, have mercy on me. Now she just as humbly as she knows how said, help me. Help me. Notice, if you will, his condemnation. Now again, this is the Lord. Brother Adrian, this is the Lord. This is Jesus, the Lord manifested in the flesh. She's called him Lord twice. She's pleaded for mercy. She pleaded for help. What's he do? He condemns her. Look at verse 26. But he answered and said, It is not meet to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Now, she just, he just called her a dog. Can I say, let me go back and talk to the guy that owns a kennel. How many dogs you got now? How many sons do you have? How many sons you got at home? You got three too many dogs. Huh? Now, could I say, he didn't call her these little fluffy, you know, chew toy, uh, give them treats dogs that you got. He's calling her a mangy, nasty, sorry, other side of the tracks, deserves to be put out of his misery dog. He said... It's not me to take the children's bread and give it to an absolutely disgusting, sorry, no good, mangy, filthy, ugly, bad breath dog. Hmm? That's pretty condemning. That's pretty rough. I mean, we're talking about a lady. She has pleaded for mercy. She has pleaded for help she has recognized him as Lord even one of his disciples that is there eating with him is of the devil Judas Judas never trusted the Lord sitting there eating with him is Thomas who Thomas doubted his lordship not this woman and what does the Lord tell this woman you're a dog 
He's basically saying, you are not worthy to be in my sight. That's rough. Y'all think I get rough sometimes. Hmm? That's rough. This is stepping on the neck of somebody bowed down and worshiping him. We see his condemnation. But notice her consent, verse 27. And she said, truth, Lord. She comes to the realization of what she really is. She's not worthy to be in his presence. She's not worthy of his mercy. She's not worthy of his help. And she recognizes what he is telling her is the truth. She said, that's all I am, a dog. I have no right to you. I do not deserve anything that you offer or don't offer. I'm nothing more than a mangy Gentile dog. We see her consent. But then notice her commenting. Verse 27, and she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat <laughs> of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. <laughs> what boldness this woman's got. I mean, she's standing before the Lord, and she said, You're right, I'm a dog. Uh, dogs, uh, I'm a mangy dog. I'm not worthy of anything. But, Lord, you do know the dogs do eat from the crumbs of the master's table. Huh? What an answer. What a comment. What an, a, 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 a real stroke of reality right here. Uh, she said, uh, yeah, I, I realize I'm a dog, but I've seen dogs, mangy dogs, unworthy dogs, filthy dogs. Uh, they do eat from the crumbs uh, of the master's table. Uh, you can ask Miss Annette. Uh, we've been in them islands, go down there in those islands, uh, and their dogs don't look like our dogs. Uh, 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 we pamper our dogs. Uh, some, uh, some of you treat your dogs better than you treat your children. But anyway, that's another message. Uh, uh, we're talking about these dogs down there that are strays. Uh, that are, uh, I mean, they're just a uh, uh, scoundrel of dogs. Uh, I mean, they just, uh, uh, they're, they're, you can count the ribs. Uh, and they just uh, are so pathetic and people don't pay any attention to them uh, and they just scrounge around hoping to get a crumb. Uh, this woman realized uh, she's doing nothing more than just scrounging around uh, hoping to get a crumb that falls from the master's table. Uh, what a reality. Uh, you know what you and I should have done tonight? Uh, we should have pulled in here, uh, uh, crawled to the altar, uh, begin to worship the Lord because he's worth and said, Lord, I, I, I know you set a buffet uh, uh, in the midst of our enemies for your children. Uh, I'm not worthy to pull up to your table uh, and have the buffet. Uh, Lord, just give me a crumb. Uh, I'm just a scoundrel of a dog, uh, not worthy of anything, uh, but just crumbs for your table uh, will sustain me, and it's far more than I deserve. Uh, Oh, business pick up around church. We had that attitude. Uh, notice, if you will, his compliment in verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. I wonder if the Lord could say that about us tonight. Maybe the reason Brother Adrian had to sing that song tonight is because we don't stand still and see the salvation of the Lord very often. We don't come to that realization to be still and know that He's God. I wonder how our faith... Can I say a lot of people have struggling faith. Some people have clinging faith. We're clinging on to that last thread of hope. Some people have resisting faith. Uh, and I say very few have great faith. What a compliment. The Lord looks at this woman he just called a dog and says, you got great faith. Hmm? And can I say that we find the curative. Verse 28, he said, Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Now see, we can read the whole story and see what happened. But if you put it in real time, she didn't think he was going to do anything for her daughter. 
but once she come to the realization of who she was and who he really is and she made the comment that she made and showed faith the Lord he honors faith we saw that this morning and what did he do he healed her daughter even though she was undeserving can I say he forgave you or my sin even though we were undeserving can I say he's done things for us even though we were undeserving? And yes, Brother Brian, he was looking out for you long before you ever got saved, uh, even though you didn't deserve it. Uh, hey, uh, if we's honest, we don't deserve anything from the hand of God. Uh, we don't deserve to have victory in Jesus. Uh, we, don't have, we don't deserve having heaven as our home. Uh, uh, we all deserve to be burning in the charred regions of the dam, uh, for it was our sin that hung Jesus on the cross. Uh, it was our sin uh, uh, that he bled and died for. Uh, hey, it was our sin. Uh, we should have been hanging on a cross. Uh, we should have died for our sin. Uh, we should have died and went to hell uh, and paid for our sins for all of eternity. Uh, we don't deserve his grace. Uh, we don't deserve his mercy. Uh, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, thank God we don't get what we deserve. Uh, we got Jesus, uh, and through him we receive the grace of God. Uh, we got the mercy of God. Uh, we can come and bless and praise the Lord and know why we're blessing him. Because uh, we're just so Gentile dogs uh, that the Master uh, shined on us one day. Uh, I'm interested... And verse 26. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. This is my thought tonight. I want to preach on doghouse Christians. Doghouse Christians. Can I say, yes, we were old Gentile dogs, old mangy, sinful, wicked dogs, till Jesus passed by. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. The Bible said we are not of the rudiments of this world, uh, but we are a chosen generation, uh, a peculiar people. Uh, well, we have been changed by the goodness of God. Uh, we are not what we used to be. Uh, we are not to live like the world. Uh, we are not to scrounge around like dogs anymore. Uh, we've been made joint heirs to the throne of Christ. Uh, we've been made kings and priests in Christ. Uh, we are of a royal priesthood. Uh, we are not not uh, from the gutters anymore. Uh, we are not from the other side of the tracks anymore. Uh, our citizenship is in heaven. Uh, our name is recorded in the Lamb's book of life. Uh, hey, uh, God has a reward for us on the other side. Uh, he's got a crown waiting on us. Uh, he's got gold, silver, and precious stones waiting on us. Uh, he's got a mansion over on the hillside for us. Uh, we get to walk on streets of gold, uh, live in a city that has walls of jasper, uh, gates of pearl. Uh, hey, we have a right uh, uh, because we are an heir to the throne of God. Uh, everything Christ has, he's going to share with us. Uh, we're not a dog anymore. Uh, we shouldn't live like dogs. Uh, we shouldn't look like dogs. Uh, we should return to the vomit of dogs. Uh, we're not a dog anymore in Christ Jesus. But there's some of God's youngins. They're in the doghouse. Now, I'm old enough to remember, if you was in the doghouse, man, it wasn't good. And there's some, Brother Ray, that have tasted the good grace of God. But tonight, their actions have put them in the doghouse. So I want to preach on doghouse Christians for a few minutes. Can I say this? A doghouse Christian has angered the master. The Bible says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of an angry God. Listen, I don't really want to make anybody mad at me. I got a big enough problem 24 hours a day with this guy. 
I don't need any more enemies. I don't want to make anybody mad or angry with me. I really don't. But if you believe that book like it's written, and you preach it like it's written, you're going to ruffle some feathers. And there are some folks that are not going to be happy, happy, happy with you all the time. And listen, I don't want to make anybody, Brother Phil, I don't want to anger anybody. I don't want anybody to be, I want people to uh, uh, love the Lord and love me as one of his servants. Uh, and I want them to uh, serve the Lord and get all the blessings of God. And I preach the way I preach uh, because I want all the choice blessings for every one of God's people. Uh, but hey, uh, uh, you hear me and hear me well. Uh, I'd sooner make every one of you madder than the devil uh, and every one of you angry to the end agree with me uh, uh, before I ever made the Lord angry with me. Uh, I want to live a life that's pleasing unto the Lord. Uh, I want to live a life that honors the Lord. Uh, I want the Lord uh, uh, to see that I am thankful for what He's done in my life. Uh, I want to worship the Lord and give Him the praise to His name. Uh, I want God to be pleased with my praise uh, and I want Him to inhabit my praise and come and hang out for a little while. Uh, I never want the Lord to be angry with me uh, but there's some in the doghouse because they've angered the Lord you say how have they angered the Lord for him to know it to do good and doeth it not to him it is sin and when we know the truth uh, and we reject it uh, and live how we want to live uh, and our life deny the Lord that bought us it angers the Lord uh, can I say he does get angry with his people from time to time. He said, Preacher, not the Lord. Joel Holstein said, Every day's a Friday. I don't know I'm on Joel tonight just because he's wicked, I guess. But listen, he doesn't always tell the truth. But can I say this? Go read the Old Testament. Israel made him angry a lot. A few times he wanted to wipe them off the face of the earth. I want to tell you something. Just because we're saved doesn't mean that we can live however we want to and God be pleased with us. Oh, you can choose to live however you want to, but there are consequences for our choices. And I say those that are doghouse Christians, they've angered the Lord. Hmm? They're in the doghouse. Now, Colonel, yesterday you celebrated 50 years being married to Miss Vanessa. Now, you're in the house of God. You, you better not lie to me. You ever been in the doghouse? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew that. You know how they know that? It hadn't been 50, only been 35 years of missing that. There have been some times I've been in the doghouse. huh? There, yeah, I know. And there's times I've been in the doghouse uh, knowingly. And there's times that I've just done something dumb, didn't even know what I did. But I ended up in the doghouse. It's not a good place, is it? No, it's not a good place, huh? When mama's mad, it ain't good. Hmm? Huh? Listen, it's not a good thing to be in a doghouse. Oh, it's a bad thing to be in a doghouse. And as children of God, to have God angry with us? Whew, listen, Seth, you and Bailey about to get married. Let me help you, son. I want to help you right now. You never hear anything else I've ever preached here. This, learn these two words. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Whatever she wants. <laughs> yes, dear. She wants to move the furniture 18 times to see where she likes it best. Yes, dear. Huh? She wants to go out and buy the ugliest flowers in plant yard? Yes, dear. Huh? Whatever. Yes, dear. Huh? You want to stay out of the doghouse. Huh? Because you're going to get married. You can't go back to mama's house. Huh? There's only one other place you can be. It's called the doghouse. You don't want to end up there. It ain't good. Huh? Huh? It ain't good. Now, when you get old like Brother Jim, you can live in the doghouse and don't care. You know? Because he's old. He don't care anymore. Huh? You don't want to end up in the doghouse. You end up in the doghouse, can I say this? It's a pride issue. Amen. Because before you ever start heading down the path to anger the Lord, I'm talking about saved people. The Holy Ghost lives in you, and the Holy Ghost says, don't do it. And you do it anyway. It's a pride issue. The essence of sin and the proclamation, really, of Satan is this. My right to my, to my, my, right to my claim to myself. I'll do what I want to do. Well, you can, but you're going to pay for it. Huh? And Brother Ron, when we end up in the doghouse, the only way to get out of the doghouse, we've got to bite the bullet and say, I'm sorry. 
And can I say with the Lord, words don't mean much. There must be works meet for repentance. you got to prove you're sorry. Hmm? Listen, there are doghouse Christians because they've angered the Lord and they got too much pride to tell the Lord they're sorry and get right with the Lord. Hmm? This woman admitted she was a dog. She got right with the Lord and then the Lord did something wonderful for her. And I say doghouse Christians have angered the master. Can I say this? Doghouse Christians are away from the master's house. You want me to say it again? Doghouse Christians are away from the master's house. If they weren't a doghouse Christian, they'd be in the master's house, not the doghouse. But they're in the doghouse because they're away from the master's house. Can I say? There's a lot of people out there that are saved. They should be in church tonight. They're away from the master's house, and they're in the doghouse. Hmm? Hmm? They're just not faithful. Now, you've heard me say this a million times. Now, this may be different at the Ruby house, but at the foster house, I can't tell Mama I've been pretty faithful. And I've got to feel Miss Rhonda won't take pretty faithful either. No, it wouldn't end well. Huh? Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. You'd be under the doghouse. Yes, yes. Under the Mustang, tire tracks all over him. Huh? Huh? Well, if our wives won't accept pretty faithful, and we're the bride of Christ, do you think Christ accepts pretty faithful? No, he doesn't. And those that are in the doghouse are away from the master's house. And there are folks that are away from the master's house. I'm just looking around. I ain't judging nobody. I'm looking around, but I had some people tell me this morning on the way out they not only enjoyed the message, but they enjoyed last Sunday's message. And I scratched my head thinking, you wasn't here last Sunday. So they must have caught, caught up online. But I noticed that whatever they got today must have been so good that they didn't have to come back tonight. Now, I'm not judging them. Some people do get sick. Some people are providentially hindered. But some people, Brother Tony, are in the doghouse. Now, last week you wasn't here because Miss Samantha's in the hospital. That's understandable. That's providentially hindered. You was in your rightful place as her daddy. You was by her side. It was serious. There were some things going on. And everybody in this church knew and understood and was praying for you and praying for Miss Brandy, but especially for Miss Samantha. We're glad the Lord's helped her. The Lord's touched her. Glad to see you back this week. I'm not talking about you being in the doghouse. But there's some that could be here. Miss Barb, we understand. You're taking care of Mama. And Mama's a dear saint of God. And we hate that what has befallen her and that she's not able to come. I know without a shadow of a doubt that if she's able, she'd be here because she proved that. She was here for years, faithful, and loved God, and she still loves God. She's just physically not able. We know you take care of Mama, and we know that you don't get much help, and whenever you get help, you get to come. We understand that. That's a blessing. We know you're not in the doghouse when you're not here. But there's some brother Ed could be here, and they don't have any excuse. They're doghouse Christians. They're away from the master's table. Hmm? Mm -mm. Boy, it got real quiet on that. Hmm. Where's all that shouting went on a minute ago? Still a truth. They're doghouse Christians because they're away from the master's house. Because they've angered the master. Can I say this? Doghouse Christians have an appetite for crumbs. When I was lost, all I needed was a crumb. That changed my life. But now that I've been born again, the Lord puts a buffet out. I didn't get overweight looking at food. I like to eat. Say, preacher, why does your family, why do you take cruises? Because I like to eat. Uh, matter of fact, at this point in our age, Miss Annette and I have based our trips on how good the food has been. Now, from here forward, it's going to be how much El Rose enjoyed the trip. But still, somewhere around the equation is going to be some food. Now, I wonder, if our bodies enjoy natural food, and I enjoy it, 
My friend up there running the video right now, Brother Brian, he enjoys eating. That fellow's as close to being a goat as anything I've ever seen in my life. You put it in front of him, he's going to try it. He's going to eat it. Why he don't weigh 750 pounds, I don't know. huh? And this other brother, Brian,'s got a hollow leg because I've seen him eat. He only plays golf to eat snacks. I've seen that, huh? Uh, I mean, we like to eat. Anybody in here don't like to eat? Let me see you because you're weird. I don't want to be around you. Anybody don't like to eat? I like to eat. I like to eat. I mean, I like to eat. I like it. I like to eat. I didn't feel real good today, but we had everybody over, Brother Ray, and uh, Miss Nett put out a spread. Guess what? I ate. I ate, a, I ate more than my plate could hold. I like to eat. Uh, 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 Cam, you like? Oh, I thought you was Cam. I'm sorry. You like to eat, son? Well, it doesn't show on you. Eat some more. Huh? I mean, you need to get to looking like him. I mean, get okay, got to eat. Huh? Listen, uh, over there, they got food over there in Indiana. Eat, okay? Be all right. Huh? Well, if we like to eat natural food, and I like hog, I like chicken, I like you know, beef, 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 beef. I like it all. I even like Thai food. Didn't think I would. And we're having that next Sunday after church, by the way. Brother Jay and Miss Toey are catering in from their restaurant. Thai food. Say, what is Thai food? I don't know, but I eat chicken and pork. I know that, huh? Well, I'm trying to help you. This. Well, I, I eat it all. Why would I eat all this natural food and eat any less of spiritual food? If you don't eat physically, you're going to get sick. If you don't eat spiritually, you're going to dry up and get sick. You're going to be a very weak, anemic Christian. Uh, uh, and when troubles come, and by the way, troubles do come, uh, Job said man's days are few and full of trouble. Uh, you're going to face some things in this life that's bigger than you, that's bigger than anything you ever thought. Uh, and if you're not strengthened with spiritual meat and spiritual food, uh, you're not going to be able to handle it, friend. Uh, uh, it'll run over you. It'll overcome come you uh, we need spiritual meat uh, and the Lord sets a table every Sunday morning Sunday night Wednesday night uh, revival meeting night uh, he wants to feed our souls uh, he wants to bless us and strengthen us and increase our faith uh, and he puts a table before us uh, and everything he puts before us uh, it'll help us uh, it'll grow us uh, it'll sustain us uh, I mean uh, Hallelujah, he gave uh, Elijah a meal that sustained him uh, uh, for 40 days. Uh, uh, the Lord uh, knows what we have in need of, uh, but those that are in the doghouse, uh, they don't want a buffet. Uh, they don't want the best. Uh, they don't want to sit down and feast uh, at the feet of the master. Uh, they're satisfied just with the crumbs. Hallelujah. When I open up a pack of Swiss rolls, I don't pull them out and throw them away, scrape off the chocolate on a little cardboard thing, be satisfied with that. I want the whole thing. Now, I'm not bad as Brother Tommy. I don't have uh, so many little Debbies on me when I go through the airport that they confiscate them. That's sad, son. Twinkies, it don't matter. That's sad. What a bad testimony. Uh, wherever you was going's got Twinkies. Uh, they even got Twinkies in the islands, man. Uh, he's hoarding up Twinkies. No wonder I can't find them at the grocery store. But what a testament. He didn't want crumbs. He wanted his Twinkies and took them with him. What a blessing. Uh, why would we be satisfied with some crumbs? Amen. Now I know about this. If I don't eat much, my stomach shrinks. I've done this. We plan to go over to Montgomery Inn and have some ribs. Well, I want that size that takes up two plates. So I'm going to make room for them, Miss Janet. I just don't eat for a couple of days. Not like I normally eat. But when I get there, Brother Phil, I'm just not that hungry. Because my stomach shrunk because not been eaten properly. And can I say, when some people do come to the master's house, if they haven't been eaten properly, they're just not hungry. 
God puts a whole buffet before them, but they never pull up and eat because they're just not hungry. We ought to be hungry for Him. We ought to be hungry for His Word. We ought to be hungry for what the Master has for us. But if we haven't been eating all week, if we haven't been spending time with Him all week, we'll come in and we won't be hungry. And we'll be satisfied with the crumbs. Doghouse Christians, they've angered the Master. They're away from the Master's house. They have no appetite for Christ. But can I say this? They accede to the enemy's attacks. See, if you're not very strong spiritually, when the enemy attacks, and he will attack, you'll just fall for it and do whatever the enemy says. How many of you know that the real battle with the enemy, the devil's in our minds? Your mind's not saved, and he attacks in our mind. How many of you can admit that the enemy's told you things like this, the Lord don't really love you? Enemy ever told you that? Enemy ever tell you the Lord don't hear your prayers? He don't care about you. Enemy ever say, why do you keep going to church? You're not getting much out of it. Look at all your neighbors. They don't go to church and look at them. They got a bass boat and they got newer cars and they got this and they got that and they got this. If you just lay out of church, you can have all that too. I mean, the enemy will lie to you. He'll attack your mind. He'll tell you all kinds of junk. Huh? And if you're not strong in the Lord, does not Ephesians say, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might? Put on the whole arm of God? If you're, in the, if you're not strong in the Lord, you'll accede to the enemy's attacks. You'll start believing the enemy. Why is it we'll believe the enemy rather than believe the Lord? Hmm? Can I say it takes just as much faith to believe in what the enemy says as it does to believe what the Lord says? How come we put faith in the enemy's attacks? Because we listen to him more than we listen to the Lord. Hmm? And I'm telling you, doghouse Christians, they've bought hook, line, and sinker what the enemy's fishing. And can I say, there's a lot of good people out of church tonight because they bought in to what the enemy was feeding. Hmm? If, you're not, if you're not careful, the devil will tell you how sorry, how no good, how big a dog you are. No, see, that's what you were till you met the Lord. The devil will remind you of your past. But see, if you get in the Bible, you realize in the Lord you have no past. You've been washed. You've been cleansed. There is no past. Huh? You're new in Christ, and His mercies are renewed every day. But if you get to listen to that enemy, he'll have you twisted and everything and say, well, can the enemy really do that? What did he do to Eve? She just believed what he said, and it destroyed all of mankind. Hmm. You're not careful. You start listening to him, you'll end up in a doghouse. And doghouse Christians, they listen to the enemy a whole lot more than they do the Lord. Say, how do you know that, preacher? Because they stay in a doghouse. You don't have to stay in a doghouse. If we confess our sins, hmm? huh? He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Can I say, pride will put you in the doghouse, but repentance will get you out. When you listen to the devil, You'll stay in the doghouse. And then I'll say this lastly. Doghouse Christians, they assent to the ideal that they'll be more than a dog. Some of y'all tonight are just one step from the doghouse because you think you'll never be more than a dog. All you see is your faults and your failures. All you see is what you can't be and what you've done. What you don't see is what Jesus done and what he can do and how great he is. When you're looking at you, you're going to fall short every day. That's why the Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. If you'll get your eyes off you and get your eyes on him, 
you'll forget about you. Can I say in the Bible we have three accounts where people saw the glorified Christ. And can I say in every account they fell at his feet as a dead man because they don't matter anymore. It's all about him. And if you get the idea in your head that you'll never be any more than a dog, then you'll stay in a doghouse. I know people at a church right now, some I've talked to recently, they don't get back in church because they think they deserve the doghouse. I've had some even tell me, I'll never be what I used to be because I'm just a dog. I've failed God. Well, let me help you with something, neighbor. We've all failed God. We've failed the grace of God today. We all come short of His glory. huh? In ourselves dwelleth no good thing. In ourselves we cry like the Apostle Paul, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? In ourselves there is nothing that would merit the favor of God. But aren't you glad? My merit is not in me. It's in Him and what He did on the cross. Uh, and it's in Him and who He is. Uh, and my dear friends, I've been robed in His righteousness, uh, washed by His blood, uh, sealed by the Spirit of God. Uh, it's not me, but it's Him that dwelleth in me. Uh, and my dear friends, if you can ever get a hold of the fact, uh, you are not a dog anymore. Uh, we are called Christians. Uh, we carry His name. Uh, it's all about Him and what? What he's able to do for us uh, and he can get you out of the doghouse if you quit looking at yourself quit feeling sorry for yourself and quit uh, 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 figuring out the future based on yourself well, I never can do anything for God look at me woe is me we got that Eeyore mentality thanks for noticing when you get an eagle mentality because that's the type of a Christian in the Bible. You can soar above everything that you ever was in Christ Jesus. Your friend, you can get out of the doghouse. Doghouse Christians, they assent to the idea that they'll never be any more than a dog. Boy, I'm glad in Christ Jesus we're far more than a dog. We're accepted in the beloved, and we are a joint heir to the throne of Christ. So maybe you're here tonight and you're in the doghouse. Why would you want to stay in a doghouse? I've never seen a doghouse near as nice as the master's house. Hmm. Why would you want to stay there? Doghouse is only two steps from a hog pen. Why would you want to stay in a doghouse? Well, you can stay at the master's house. huh? The doghouse, you get a bed of straw. The master's house, you get the best bed in the house. I mean, it's king size and it's wonderful, huh? Listen, all those trips I go and I preach meetings and all that, I'm thankful people put me up in nice places and I'm always thankful for a good place to pillow my head, but there's no place like home. There's no mattress like my mattress. There's no pillow like my pillow so much I take my pillow with me. I mean, there's just no place like where I, I have uh, 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 at the house. There's no, no place like it. So why would I want to stay at a doghouse when I can stay at the master's house? Amen. And why would you? You don't have to stay in a doghouse. You can be in the master's house. Huh? Don't believe the lies of the devil. Yeah, in your flesh you ain't worthy of the master, but who is? But the Lord didn't save us based on what we're worthy of. He saved us because he loves us. And all he wants from us is to love him back. And if you really love him the way you should love him, you won't be in the doghouse. You'll be right there at the master's house. I'll close with this. I know many of you got dogs. I got one. I got a little 15-pound fur bag. No, oh, Miss Nett got him for me for my 50th birthday. So this year he'll be 11, which in dog years is Clint's age. Uh, old. Uh, but that little booger, ever since the first night we brought him home, I mean, Miss Nett broke all the rules, you know. He's got to sleep in a kennel. We never feed him any table food. Who's the first one to feed him table food? Her. The first night he started whining because he's in the kennel. Guess who got him out? Put him in our bed. Her. Huh? But the breed of dog I got, they were, they were bred in China, and they were bred to sit at the emperor's feet. And that dog always is at my feet. If I'm sitting in my recliner with it unreclined, he's at my feet. 
if I recline it, he jumps on the recliner and he sits at my feet. When we go to bed at night and we put that dog in the bed with us, he always lays at my feet. He won't eat until we're both home and he's got to where he won't eat until we get in bed and we're both in bed. He'll just sit there and look at the food until we're both in bed. He'll eat at my feet. He seat, sits at my feet. But if something happens, Brother Peter, as soon as the lights go out, he scooches up in between me and Mama. And he's my dog. But his head goes on her pillow and the other end's on mine. He's just paying her back for getting him out of kennel and feeding him real food. Oh, but what I'm saying is, Brother Ed, I love you. But if you came at my house and the lights go out and you scooch up in between, I'm shooting you. You know what I'm saying? But that dog, he's not in a dog house. We don't even have a dog house. That dog was a gift. And that dog has privileges. No other dog in the neighborhood stays at my house. Matter of fact, I let him bark at the other dogs and run them off. But at night, he's laying right there next to the master. Can I say we were dogs? But because of a gift, the gift that God gave his only begotten son, we received something greater than we'd ever would have imagined. We received eternal life. Uh, and listen, it's a joy to stay at the Master's feet. Uh, it's a privilege to be at His feet. Uh, matter of fact, those that have learned the secret of being at His feet, uh, whoa, you understand uh, uh, the relationship in its proper order. Uh, but every now and then, uh, uh, the Master uh, uh, let us move from His feet to get up real close to Him. Uh, uh, friend, you don't have to be in the doghouse. Uh, you can be real close to the Master because uh, He loves you. Uh, he gave His life for you. Uh, he redeemed you from the doghouse. Uh, and friend, you can stay at the Master's house. Why would you ever want to be in the doghouse? Oh, tonight. It's about time we quit acting like dogs and start acting like well, God really is our master. You know what the world's looking for? They're looking for something that's real. If they ever see something in us, I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm not talking about stuff shirtedness I'm not talking about being a Pharisee. If they ever really seen how much we love the master and the joy, when I come home, that dog acts like I've been gone for months. He's so excited to see me. We ought to be so excited to see the Lord. Amen. And folks ought to see that in us and see the love of the Lord in our hearts and our lives. And my dear friends, if you ever get out of the doghouse and fall back in love with the Master, they'll see it in you and they'll see it in me. God help us not to be doghouse Christians. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, if you'll get a song of invitation. God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. You might be here tonight and you've never been born again. If you come, we'll get some, take a Bible and show you how to be born again. You might be saved, but you're living beneath the privileges that's afforded you being a Christian. Why would you want to live in a doghouse? That's for dogs. You're no longer a dog. Why don't you come and just spend some time with the Master? Maybe tonight you're seated right next to the Master. Maybe you ought to come and thank Him for the special seat you got. Maybe you ought to thank him for what he's done in your life. I don't know, but I do know this. He's worthy of our worship. While they're picking out a song, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for this little thought you gave me. Thank you for your goodness. Now, Father, I pray you'd help people now. Lord, I, I hope nobody's in the doghouse. But if somebody is, I pray that, Lord, the sweet Holy Ghost of God would just draw them, speak to them, tell them, why are you in the doghouse when you can be at the master's house? Help them to get back into fellowship with you and be at the master's house. Lord, I do pray if there's anybody that doesn't know you, they'd come to trust in you. These already in the altar, bless them, help them. They may be thanking you. They may be loving on you. They may be confessing some, whatever they're doing. They're doing business with you. Bless them, Lord. And Lord, any others that need to come, Lord, just speak to their hearts. Help them to see the Master careth for them. Bless as only you can. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen.
If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.